Good evening everyone, Late Night Mega here, and tonight we're playing something special. We're playing Mega Man Revenge of the Fallen Abridged. Uh, this is a fan-made game made by Dark Flame Wolf, and uh, it's called Abridged because uh, there's an original version, and the original version has stages that are very lengthy. One of the main complaints that Dark Flame Wolf got was that the stages were too long. Now, I didn't have too much of a problem with the length of the stages after playing the game a while for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, the stages had alternate paths in them, and the stages were very, very, the, uh, uh, they were very well designed, lots of good uh, platforming challenges and puzzles and such, and this all added to uh, my enjoyment of, of the game and the stages, so I didn't really get too bored traveling through them. And also the biggest thing is in the original version uh, checkpoints functioned kind of like they do in Mega Man X5 and X6, where if you get a game over and select continue, you could restart at the halfway point or at the boss gate, provided you made it that far. And so those things kind of mitigated the long stages, but uh, this is the new abridged version that has shorter stages, so what I'm going to expect is I'm going to expect uh, stages the length of normal Mega Man games like Mega Man 1 through uh, 10 on the... 1 through 6 on the NES and 9 and 10 on, well, the newer platforms and 7 and 8, while well, they're kind of not 8-bit, but this is a 8-bit-esque uh, game. And another thing you'll notice is that the music is remixed versions of uh, classic Mega Man tunes, this one being from Mega Man 7, and typically I really don't like remixed music, but uh, you know, for this game it works very well. Uh, typically, if you if you give me a tune and then give me a, a remixed version months later, I will 95% likely uh, prefer the original one over that. I don't know what it is about that. I'm not typically a uh, one of those original is always the best sort of people. But here, that kind of goes out the window because I enjoy the remix versions a lot more than uh, the originals in most cases. And you'll see we have some plot here going on on the bottom screen. Uh, Dr. Wily is up to his old tricks. He's trying to steal a bunch of stuff, but he has a way to uh, revive defeated robot masters. And so that's that's interesting. And Rush is kind of damaged or something. We can't take Rush with him, but we have to find uh, Rush upgrades. So that's a nice little hint of that in the uh, intro sequence here. Uh, so... I'm also going to leave a link in the description of uh, this video and, and all the videos for this series uh, because in case you guys want to play this game, and I highly encourage you to, uh, if you're into Mega Man fan games or Mega Man games in general, give this one a shot. Uh, even though I'm calling this a semi-blind playthrough, I have played the original version of this game, but I have not played through the abridged version, well, past the intro stage. Uh, I've also been told by Dark Flame Wolf that some of the uh, stages have been uh, have been changed and have some new things added to them. So that's why I'm calling it semi-blind. First thing you'll notice, we can control the height of our jump. This is amazing for Mega Man fan games. A lot of fan games have a difficulty. Uh, getting the controls right for some reason. Some of the newer fan games do a really good job with this, and I think the control has been one of the biggest things that have plagued uh, the Mega Man fan games over the years until uh, up until Mega Man Unlimited was released. And you'll notice we have a box here that we can't destroy. And there's a mini E-Tank in there. I'll explain more about what that does uh, a little bit later. And the controls are just so fluid, they respond very well, very well done. And you can see we also have our slide in addition to the charge shot, and I really appreciate having the ability to slide. Uh, those jumping fa failures were entirely my fault there. And this is overall a very 
decent intro stage. We're in kind of uh, Proto Man's castle from Mega Man 5 is the layout. But uh, it, it gives us an introduction to some of the challenges. I'm surprised those uh, guys dropping their face bombs didn't hit me more. Usually they like always hit me. Uh, those red pellets on the bottom, those are uh, increase our score. We do have a score in this game. It's not used for a whole lot, but getting um, getting to 25,000 points will give us an extra life, and every 25,000 beyond that, I think, is the way it scales. It might scale a bit differently after the first 25,000. That one up down there is a trap because we don't have rush or a way to get out of there yet. Uh, but it's kind of well designed where you can jump down there and be like, oh, I got the one up, and oh, I didn't think about how to get back. <laughs> so, uh, well designed on the part of Dark Flame Wolf. Again, jumping failures were my problem there. And we have these platforms from Windman Stage. In the original, I think it took uh, a little bit longer for the platforms to flip sides. I could be mistaken on that, but they feel a little bit faster in this one. Remember in the original, I would count to three before uh, making the jump. Uh, a little bit of a spoiler warning, those platforms will be returning. At least I'm assuming they're going to return. I haven't played through the stages of this game. But so far, this is very... Uh, very similar to the original uh, version's intro stage. And we have disappearing blocks, those are back, of course. We start out with a not-so-difficult pattern, and then we move on to something a little bit more risky, because we have these spikes beneath us. Very good on the uh, difficulty progression there. And now we're combining a couple disappearing blocks with enemies, And we are at the boss. And we see Nightman here. Thou are too late, Mega Man. We hath the data we need. Wait, you, you hacked the data you need? No, we hath the data we need. Feel free to entertain thyself with a present from Wily. And first thing to note about this intro boss is there are spikes on the ceiling. That's a very nice touch, I think. Uh, and for an intro boss, this guy isn't too difficult. He takes a ton of damage from our uh, charge buster. Uh, we can jump through the platforms that come out. I don't know that you could do that in Mega Man 6 when we fought this guy. Um, other than that, he's not too difficult. A very well done uh, intro stage, in my opinion. Gets us introduced to the game, some of what we're expected to do. It shows the difficulty scaling very nice. And we beat the Robot Museum. Now there are passwords, but the game will save it automatically, so uh, a nice touch. So don't worry about writing down those really complicated looking passwords. You'll also see that uh, once we complete a stage, it tells us the items that are in there that we can collect, and once we collect those items, uh, they will be highlighted on the stage select screen. Works very much like the helmet upgrade from Mega Man X3, and I love that touch. Uh, so that way we know where we gotta go to pick up stuff that we missed, and whether or not we already got all the stuff from the stage or not. Very well done. A couple other things to note about the uh, stage select screen here is first, uh, we just ran into Nightman, and Nightman is nowhere to be found on here. So we'll have to see what that's about a bit later. Also, um, notice how there's ten Robot Masters to battle instead of the usual eight. Uh, I don't have anything against just sticking with the normal eight, but it's also nice to see some uh, variation here going up to ten. Uh, also nice is that we have two Robot Masters from Mega Man 3, two from Mega Man 4, two from Mega Man 5, uh, two from 6, and two from 9. So it's kind of a, a nice even spread throughout uh, some of the Mega Man games. And that's all. We're going to get into some of these stages next in the next part.